Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Each morning we rise and we wonder what every day will bring. For some of us, there are so many wonderful things to anticipate, new opportunities to celebrate and to chase after. We smile at the sun and revel in its warmth. And even in the midst of trouble, your love comes through to us in some of the most amazing ways. For our friends and family who experience great joy at this time, we offer our prayers of joy. For many people, pain and hurt seem to be the daily encounter with life. Hope for something better is a distant vision. And we ask you, dear Lord, to be with our sisters and brothers in their pain. Lord, we ask for your healing love to surround them as they journey through life. Give them courage. Give them peace. For all your healing mercies, we gratefully thank you, Lord. We offer prayers of healing and hope that those people who are suffering, their lives may be filled with your love and peace. We ask you, Lord, forgiveness for when we so easily turn our backs on you, when we choose not to help in times of need, when we utter words of anger and bitterness as ways in which we relate to one another. We ask that you heal our hearts and our wounded spirits. Lift us from the depths of our anguish into the light of your love, that we may serve you as faithful stewards. When the darkness becomes oppressive and we cling to our fears, forgive us, Lord. Open our hearts and release us from all those things which block us from your love. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Dear God, we are always asking and seeking your guidance for the journey you have placed us on. We would love if everything was spelled out for us so that we would know what to expect, but 
that is not how life works. In the story of the ten bridesmaids, you remind us that we should always be ready to seek you and to serve you. Lord, open our hearts today and remind us of your awesome love for us throughout all generations. We pray that you be with us and continue to journey with us and show us the way. Cleanse our hearts. Heal our relationships. Heal our bonds. Heal our wounds. Continue to take care of us and bless us with your word and your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Sisters and brothers, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Our scripture for today comes from Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 1 to 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. 
Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, loving God, powerful God, we yield to your spirit even now. As you declared through your servant Isaiah, your word shall not return to you void, but it shall accomplish that which you please, and it shall prosper where you send it. To everyone hearing my voice, speak a word, Lord, a word for their season, a word for their nourishment, a word of comfort or discomfort, and ultimately, a word for their salvation. Let me decrease, Lord, and may you increase in me and in all our hearts. In the name of Jesus, our Savior and soon coming King. Amen. Our meditation this evening is based on Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13, a portion of scripture widely referred to as the parable of the ten virgins. Our overarching theme today is readiness. And Matthew 25 verse 1 to 13 places emphasis on the idea of readiness. In fact, even in the preceding chapter, Jesus emphasized this theme of readiness as he spoke at length 
about signs of the end of the age and the notion of his second coming. The Gospel of Luke in chapter 21, for example, also places Jesus on record as pointing us in the direction of readiness for the end. In these portions of scripture, Jesus presents a rigid dichotomy. We are either ready for the end or we are not. There is no in-between, no gray areas, and no room for negotiation. We are either ready, meaning that we are in good standing with him, or we are not ready, meaning that we are consigned to eternal damnation. Following from this overarching theme of readiness, there are four points I want us to consider today. One, we must be ready for the hour of reckoning. Two, we do not know the hour. Three, we must each individually work out our salvation. And four, there is a point of no return. One, we must be ready for the hour of reckoning. The predominant thrust of the parable of the ten virgins is that Christ will return at an unknown hour and that his people must be ready. In many ways, our ordinary everyday lives involve a significant amount of getting ready. Some of us spend years undergoing education and training in preparation for a career. Even when we have no surety about how things would unfold, we press on in anticipation that our hard work and sacrifice will eventually reap dividends. Firemen and women are trained and equipped to fight fires. They know that there will be fires, but they have no idea of precisely when there will be a fire. Nonetheless, they must be ready to move when called upon. Countries also spend a significant amount of resources, either preparing for war, preparing to defend themselves from an attack, or beefing up their national security to a point where they deter adversaries from attacking them. Friends, as followers of Christ, we are called on to be in a constant state of readiness for his return. Just like a firefighter who is on alert to fight fires or a country that is in a perpetual state of readiness to defend itself. Those of us who know Christ must remain vigilant and be ready for his return. Those of us who do not know Christ, the message to us is to get to know him and prepare for the hour of his coming. Essentially, we are ready for Christ's return if we have trusted him and him alone for our salvation. The second point I want us to focus on is that the hour is unknown. Even as we are being called on to be in a constant state of readiness for our reckoning with Christ, we are reminded that we do not know the hour of his coming, nor the hour of our death. In the parable that Jesus told in Matthew 25, 1-13, to the bridegroom was delayed. As we can see from the unfolding of the story, to be delayed is not to be a no-show. I recall as a boy, I heard someone say that since he himself was a boy, he heard that Jesus was coming again, and as a grown man, he was hearing the same thing. Therefore, he wondered where Jesus was and why he was taking so long. Needless to say, this man used Jesus' supposed delay in returning as the basis for his unbelief. In Mark chapter 13 and verse 35, Jesus makes it clear that we do not know when the master of the house will come. Earlier in Mark 13 and 32, Jesus also claims that not even the angels in heaven, nor the sun, nor the day or the hour. However, we should not see this uncertainty about the hour or the apparent delay as some kind of suggestion that this is all a hoax. Jesus did give us some clues about what to expect as the season of his second coming draws near. In Matthew 24, Jesus says that we will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but we should not be alarmed because such things must happen before the end. Jesus also said that there will be famines and earthquakes. Many will fall away and they will betray one another and hate one another. Among other things, Jesus said that before the end, 
the love of many will grow cold and there will be great suffering, suffering as has never been seen before and that will never be seen again. At this very moment, wars, diseases, famine and death are stalking the land. If ever there was a time to be vigilant or watchful, to be unwavering in prayer, to be dedicated to Christ, and to be concerned about the salvation of others, it is now. Just one glance at our world today suggests that this is not the season to be flippant with our lives or slack concerning our salvation. The third point I want to make is that we must work out our salvation individually. We might be initially surprised that the five wise virgins did not share their oil with the foolish virgins. This is not to suggest that the five wise virgins were selfish. When we come to the interpretation of this parable, we can see that the saved cannot share what they have in Christ with the lost. The lost will not enter heaven based on the salvation others have received. Each person is accountable for his or her own choices. In Deuteronomy 24 and verse 16, we are told that parents shall not be put to death for their children, nor shall children be put to death for their parents, only for their own crimes may persons be put to death. Ezekiel 18 and verse 20 tells us that the person who sins shall die. A child shall not suffer for the iniquity of a parent, nor a parent suffer for the iniquity of a child. The righteousness of the righteous shall be his own, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be his own. The prophet Jeremiah also tells us in Jeremiah 31 verses 29 and 30, that in those days they shall no longer say, Parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But all shall die for their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. When it comes to the working out of our own salvation, it matters not whether a parent or family member is a prayer warrior, pastor, deacon, or steward. It matters not whether we come from good stock, as some people may say. What matters is our personal relationship with Christ. Do you know this Christ? Are you secure in your salvation? The fourth and final point I want to make is that there is a point of no return. We find it emphasized in the parable of the ten virgins that once the bridegroom arrives, there is neither the time nor the opportunity for the five foolish virgins to change their destiny. Essentially, the young women caught unprepared are denied entry into the wedding. This is a message for us that there is a point of no return after which our rejection of Christ cannot be reversed. For some of us, this point of no return is death. If we die outside of Christ, our eternal damnation is assured. In Hebrews 9 verses 27 and 28, we are reminded thus, and just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. For those who are alive then, the second coming of Christ will be the point of no return. We are told in 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 12, so that all who have not believed the truth but took pleasure in unrighteousness will be condemned. Here there is no in-between. We are either saved or we are condemned. In our text, the five foolish virgins are not given the time to reverse their folly once the groom has arrived. They had their opportunity and they lost it. Then it was too late. Will we be too late? Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 2 that now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next year. God is knocking on someone's door right now. 
There is someone listening right now who has been putting off their decision to commit or recommit their lives to the Lord. Let it be today. In closing, friends, there are many uncertainties in this life. However, this I am sure of. We are closer today than we were yesterday to the day of the Lord's coming and tomorrow we will be closer than we are today. Are you ready? Will you be ready? The point of this parable in Matthew 25 verse 1 to 13 is simple. Be ready. The price for failing to be ready is too high. Let us pray. Father, we praise you. We thank you for your word, which is alive and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. Pierce us now, Lord. Penetrate our soul and spirit, even to the joints and marrow. Lord, we thank you that your word endures forever. We hold fast to your word. We believe your word. Your word is truth and your word is power. And we stand in the truth and power of your word. Lord, we live in uncertain and unusual times. Many are anxious. Many are stressed. Many have lost hope for the future. We pray for your strength. We pray that even in the midst of the trials and tribulations of this world, that you will help us to stand firm and to remain watchful and to be ready for you. May your spirit hover over our land and bring healing and restoration. May your spirit enter our hearts and bring peace and renewal. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our risen Savior and soon coming King. Amen and God bless you.
Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing, the darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and soon he will draw nigh. Up, watch in expectation, at midnight comes the cry. See that your lamps are burning, replenish them with oil, and wait for your salvation, the end of earthly toil. The watchers on the mountain proclaim the bridegroom near. Meet him as he approaches with alleluias clear. In the presence of the Lord, we have reflected on his words about the wisdom of vigilance. What are we? Foolish or wise? Probably a bit of the two. Foolish when we sin and wise when we are vigilant and try to live a bit like Jesus and to put his words into practice. May Almighty God keep us vigilant and wise and may he bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.